Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. As you guys know, the New York Knicks did not come out victorious last night as they lost on the road to the Sacramento Kings, the final score being 122 to 117. As the New York Knicks dropped to 39 and 29 on the season, and now that is their second loss in a row. You know, the New York Knicks were on this nine game winning streak. They defeated the Boston Celtics in double overtime, and then we take on the Hornets, and it's like it can kind of be a trap game. Jalen Brunson is out for the game. The Hornets haven't been some world beaters this season they've been one of the worst teams in the league as they took on the Miami Heat a couple times this season and found a way to come out victorious twice I know the Heat haven't been playing up to standards but the Miami Heat compared to the Hornets this season the Hornets are literally in the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes so you never know in the NBA and you could say these players were definitely very fatigued maybe in the second half of the game but there was clearly some things the New York Knicks had to do better you're literally up 16 points at halftime you could say you definitely have to find a way to win that game but everyone has their different outlook per perspective and insight on that game but the most important thing is take care of business up against the Sacramento Kings or find a way to win because the Kings have the number one offensive rating in the NBA for a reason they're a top three seed in the Western Conference for a reason Mike Brown's a coach of the year candidate he's having this offense flow at a whole whole other level like I mentioned number one offense when it comes to rating last season it was 26 in the league when you take a look at the off-ball cutting you know De'Aaron Fox having this crazy breakout year averaging 25 points per game manipulating leading the defense with his eyes. We already know he's one of the fastest guards in the league, but he was named an all-star. DeMontis Sabonis named an all-star, playing at an all-time high level. 17 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. He's been doing it all out there on the floor. Malik Monk, 6th man of the year candidate. Keegan Murray producing as a rookie. You gotta give credit to this overall Sacramento Kings ball club this is not going to be an easy w and the kings punched us in our mouth they really punched us in our mouth early you know demontis Sabonis bonus manipulating mitchell robinson when it comes to his footwork up and unders he has some of the best footwork in the game he may not be the most athletic but he knows how to get setters into foul trouble and he got mitchell robinson into foul trouble early you know malik monk was killing us from the outside coming off the bench you know utilizing his athleticism to get to the rack he had 19 points coming off the bench De'Aaron fox's speed and quickness it's really hard to keep up with like when it comes to any defensive personnel it is hard to keep up with De'Aaron Fox so the Sacramento Kings got off to an amazing start offensively and that's what I was expecting they wanted to catch the New York Knicks on their heels you know beat them when they're down and they lose to the Charlotte Hornets and Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart were only answers when it came to the first half Josh Hart didn't have any crazy offensive game he finished with nine points in this game did make a three-pointer had a very nice coast-to-coast bucket but when I mean offense he made very nice reads out there on the floor. He got assist, and he went on to finish with 15 rebounds in this game, eight of them being offensive rebounds. And he carried her offense like... He worked his ass off for offensive rebounds just for this offense to not produce. We finished with 24 offensive rebounds in this game, but we did not consistently capitalize off of these offensive rebounds. It absolutely hurt this ball club. So Josh Hart's hustling. He's playing very good defense, reading the passing lanes. He's even doing a little bit offensively. He's rebounding the basketball in this game. Jalen Brunson has 18 points in the first half, coming off of like not playing in the Charlotte game. This foot injury is 18 points in the first half. Was he perfect? Probably not. You could say you should have distributed the ball in some moments, but this team couldn't hit the side of the barn. This team couldn't shoot the three ball at all, and our shot diet was straight up awful in this game. R.J. Barrett had his 25 points. He did. He had a big three in the fourth quarter to tie the basketball game, and I'm going to be telling you guys what happened after we he ended up tying the basketball game. But one for eight from beyond the arc, you're not going to win games when Randall's 2 of 12 from beyond the arc. When RJ's 1 for 8 from beyond the arc, they're inefficient. You know, Randall has some big time turnovers down the stretch. When both of these guys aren't making free throws, when they're asleep on defense at times, these guys just weren't, their heads weren't in the game. Or you could say they were attacking, they were playing hard, but they weren't playing smart. There's a difference of playing hard and playing smart. Smart. Like, I remember having a teacher, I remember in Woodshop, hard work on a black. Like, I was carving that in, and he was like, my dad always told me to work smart. So, yes, it's good to work hard, but also you have to work smart when you're out there on the floor as well. So, I thought RJ was attacking at times. I remember he had a very nice drive, reverse lap. He had to, he had to make that, but free throws definitely hurt us in this game. And the Kings straight up were the better team. I was jealous of their off-ball movement. Their offense was flowing a lot better. I'm like, the Kings just look like the better team. We were actually down 20 points at one point in the first half. Like, they were just absolutely killing us, and it doesn't hurt. I mean, it doesn't help that Emmanuel quickly, yes, he gets a pass with the Hornets game. 55 minutes in Boston, like, insane. I'm not expecting his legs to be all freshened up a couple nights later. 
but he was one for 11 from the field. Couldn't hit the side of the barn and made one three-pointer. He was atrocious from beyond the arc. When you get into the teeth of the defense, he didn't know what to do. Yet our key players were not good on defense. They are inefficient. And so you, you take a look at the first half. The Kings were fully in control. You were able to cut it down to a 16-17 point lead. But then you see the news that Brunson's out. Like Brunson aggravated that foot. And that's not good if it's for like two to three weeks. Because like it's going to be probably for two to three weeks. Because no way we just rush this guy back. Like he's perfectly fine. We don't know what's going on with his foot. You're constantly on your feet as well. You don't want to bring him back when he's not 100%. And we're on this Western road trip. We have the Clippers playing up, coming up. You know, we have the Nuggets on this road trip. These aren't going to be easy games, especially with Brunson out. Brunson, his manipulation of his f- amazing footwork, you know, manipulating defenders with his eyes when it comes to getting to the basket, you know, mid-range, up and unders, these hesitations. He's amazing when it comes to an isolation score. It takes so much pressure off of Randall. You know, getting to the teeth of the defense, it opens up so much. It's going to be such a huge loss. And that's one of the main reasons Randall struggled tonight. I know Randall struggled in that first half, you could say regardless. But when it came to ball handling duties, you trust Brunson more down the stretch to get a bucket, make a smarter play than Randall. Randall had a huge turnover down the stretch, miscommunication with Josh Hart at the end of the game. Just terrible inbounds pass, like literally slipped out of Josh Hart's hands, was Kings basketball. Turnovers, free throws, you take 53 pointers in this basketball game. We made more threes than the Kings, but only, so we made more threes than the Kings. We made two more threes than the Kings, but we also took like 22 more three pointers. We took 50 threes. That is so many threes. Like that is just ridiculous. That is outrageous. And for us to get that many offensive rebounds and not capitalize is insane. But what really sparked a comeback and gave us some life, like credit to the Knicks for competing and coming back, it was Quentin Grimes, it was Josh Hart's defense, you know, Josh Hart looks like a corner the way this dude's playing defense up on guys, it is insane, the intensity he brings to the table, and I've been dying to see a player like this on the New York Knicks, but Quentin Grimes is what really ignited a spark in that third quarter. You know, he really got us back in this game. You know, it was cut to a three-point game at one point. He's knocking down threes, pushing the pace in transition, making nice reads, finding, found Mitchell Robinson inside for a nice land. Hardenstein had some nice, like, ferocious dunks. But I feel like whenever someone's driving against Hardenstein, it's like easy bucket. And that, like, he's had his fair share of blocks, but sometimes I feel like he's just soft in the interior. But he did get some nice rebounds in third quarter. But there, it's like... I don't think Hornstein is good. I don't think he's bad. I think he's just, eh. Like, he's he's eh. he's okay. Hornstein is a backup setter from what I've seen. But also, you could say we don't fully play him through under strengths of passing the basketball. And you could say he's kind of restricted in a box. But Josh Hart clearly was our best bench player in this game. Mitch finished with eight rebounds. I didn't, he was in foul trouble. Hornstein got in foul trouble at one point in this game as well. So the centers, I wouldn't really say played discipline or played well in this game. But the New York Knicks are going on this run. But what really I thought hurt the Knicks, you know, Grimes is cooking. Josh Hart's playing a good game. RJ scoring a little bit. You know, I remember he had a very nice drive to the basket that he executed. Randall starting to score a little more, a little more efficiently. Obviously, overall, they weren't efficient. But what really hurt this club is when we're coming back and the, we're playing good defense. We're starting to key in on defense, you know, start to rotate better and communicate better. What really haunted us is we would get these second chance opportunities and not like we didn't execute on them. We didn't get second chance points. You can't constantly get second chance opportunity after second chance opportunity. Shout out to Josh Hart and not make threes, not go to the basket and finish, not make your free throws. You got to make your free throws. And that's what really hurt this team because we finally had an opportunity. You know, ball goes out of bounds. New York Knicks have one second on the shot clock. We find RJ for three, knocks down the three, ties of the game. And the way you're watching this game, if the Knicks capitalized offensively, but you have to credit the Kings defense. Kevin Herter was collapsing the perimeter like I've never seen him collapse the perimeter, even a Hawks uniform defensively. But if we found ways to score, we could have been up at at one point in this game in the fourth quarter. But no, De'Aaron Fox checks in the game, 9-0 run by himself. We have no one to keep up with him. Randall's stupid turnover doesn't execute down the stretch. Doesn't help that quickly he's not executing. And then Tom Thibodeau takes Grimes out of the game with like three minutes left. I believe there's two minutes left. So, something around there. It's still a pretty pivotal part of the game. Grimes is literally our consistent, efficient offense. We're thriving with this dude, and he takes him out. Just a very frustrating game. Especially when it's just like if we made free throws, 
if we capitalized off of her second chance opportunities, if we had a better shot to eye it. But credit to the Kings. They were the smarter team. It comes down to coaching. It comes down to game planning. The co- the players executing that plan. De'Aaron Fox had a huge bucket. Blew right past Josh Hart. Finished over Hornstein. Kevin Herter had a big three at the end of the fourth quarter as well. Keegan Murray beat RJ back door sometimes. Randall got beat, I remember, bad back door in the first half. We weren't, like, smart. I think that was the main thing. We didn't play a smart game. We played hard, and I appreciate us coming back. But... We needed to be smarter for 48 minutes of basketball. Losing Brunson, that's definitely big time down the stretch if you want big buckets. If we had Brunson on those second chance opportunities, I definitely do think we would have had a chance or taken a lead. Let me know down below your thoughts. Kings were better. Peace out, y'all.